some of my A-level students bought me this lovely floating magnet platform as a thank you gift, so I thought I should make a video to explain the physics of how it works. My students sensibly decided to buy me this one because you can see everything that's going on inside it. You can even load something on top of the floating magnet. Here I've put my little tensegrity model on top, which looks very nice indeed. The basic idea is quite simple to understand. The large ring magnet produces a magnetic field which repels the floating magnet, creating a force upwards, which balances out the force of gravity or weight acting down on the magnet, and it floats. To investigate a bit more about the magnetic field from the large ring magnet, I'm using this gimbaled mini bar magnet with a red north pole and blue south pole to show the shape of the magnetic field. And you can see that the ring itself is a south pole because it attracts the red north pole of the gimbaled bar magnet. Something interesting happens around the centre where if you go up high the magnetic field goes one way and when you go a bit lower the magnetic field goes the other way. Here we can see the gimbaled magnet flipping its orientation. This magnetic field line diagram for a ring magnet kindly shared by Geek3 on Wikipedia is helpful to understand what's going on. The interesting area around here where our gimbaled bar magnet was changing its orientation as we moved it up and down, we can see what's going on with the field lines. So in this bit here, the field lines are pointing upwards. And since magnetic field lines point away from a north pole, it's as if there is a north pole in the center down here. Therefore, if we had a north pole on the bottom of the floating bar magnet, we should get a repulsive force, and that should work as we need. We can use magnetic field chips to show the shape of the magnetic field of the floating platforms magnet. This looks very pretty, but we should really use the little gimbaled magnet again. From this, we can easily see that the floating magnet has got a north pole at its bottom, because that's attracting the blue south pole. But that should work well because we've got these two north poles repelling each other and that should provide the upward force to make the magnet float. But the problem would be if this magnet ended up moving a little bit this way, then that north pole would be attracted onto the south pole over here or attracted onto the south pole over here or in any of the other directions and then it would no longer be floating. But somehow the floating magnet stays in this exact position in unstable equilibrium, which is a bit like trying to balance a ball on top of another ball, which theoretically it should be able to balance in the center, but you're never going to get it quite right, and so as soon as I let go, it's going to fall off one way or the other. When you first set it up, if the floating magnet isn't close enough to the center, it'll fall off one way or the other. But how does it stay in the very center? That's down to these four electromagnets, and each of those electromagnets can be turned on as soon as the central floating magnet is shifting one way or the other, and give it a little nudge which takes it back to the stable position in the middle. The final question then is, how does the system know which of the four electromagnets to turn on and when? And that's down to these three Hall effect sensors in the middle, which can each detect the magnetic field in the three dimensions and work out where the magnet is and therefore which electromagnet needs to be turned on. Now that you have a good understanding of how this floating magnet platform works, let's finish by watching a little bit more of the mesmerising footage of it in action and thank once again my A-level students for such a lovely gift. 